Hello and welcome to another video where we're going to be talking a little bit about creating and cloning a Git repository. So the idea with creating and cloning a Git repository is that there are assets up in the cloud that you would like to get down onto your local developer machine. Now these assets are usually a repository. So a repository again in Git is nothing more than really a collection of files that happen to be located at some URL. There could be more than one URL uh, or repository in the cloud, as you might imagine. And often, a lot of these repositories are hosted by a service. One of the most popular services for hosting Git repositories is GitHub. Now, that being said, GitHub is not the only game in town. There are other services such as Bitbucket or others which also host uh, Git repositories. The thing to notice is that each one of these repositories will have a unique URL. Once we get a hold of that URL, the idea is we would now like to be able to download or clone those repositories onto our local machine. So for example, we could go find URL number two from GitHub and clone that repository down to a local machine where we can make some changes and edits. And this is drawn as a two-way arrow here because the changes that you make on your local machine should be able to be pushed back up to the cloud as well as you should be able to pull down changes from the cloud onto your local machine. And you can do this for more than one repository and for more than one service. So for example, I might want to go to Bitbucket and find a URL of an interesting repository that I like there and download that or clone it onto my local machine as well. Before we go any further, some terminology that might be helpful is that often these repositories that are located up in the cloud are referred to as remote repositories, whereas those that are on your local developer machine are sometimes referred to as local repositories. Okay, so now that we understand the architecture here and the difference between the remote and local repositories, the first thing that we want to do for this example is go ahead and find or create a remote or a cloud repository that we would like to clone here. So GitHub seems to be the easiest way to do this here. So let's go ahead and do that now. So why don't I go ahead and start a web browser and go over to github.com here and go ahead and make yourself an account here. I already have one, so I'm going to go ahead and sign in as myself. And you're going to see that one of the things that you can do here is if you come up here to my profile, as you can click here on repositories, and you can go ahead and simply click on new to build or create a blank repository up in the cloud on GitHub. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So I'm going to click on new and I'm going to make a repository. Let's just call this how about my MATLAB as I would like this to hold some of my MATLAB functions and code. So I'll just go ahead and write a quick description here. This is an example uh, repository to hold MATLAB software and code. Let me get spell repository right. All right, I'll go ahead and make this thing public. You know, let's go ahead and put a readme file in here so people will understand and see what's going on. Um, and we can even add a license if we'd like to this. This is actually pretty helpful. I'll just go ahead and add an MIT license for fun here. And then when I click create repository, what that's going to do is it's going to create that code or the initial file structure up on GitHub in the cloud. It's going to make that remote repository for me called my MATLAB. So I click on it and here it is. And as you can see, I've got a couple of files already in here and what I can do here, let's just populate this a little bit or make a couple of edits here in the web uh, using the web interface so that this repository is not completely blank when I go ahead and try to do my initial clone here. So uh, it's very easy. You can go up here and say, you know, create new file. Let's call this maybe um, my addition function. And this is a MATLAB function. So let's just go ahead and do a typical function prototype for MATLAB. Let's go say function Z is my addition function x, y, and then I'll just write some comments here. This function simply adds two numbers together, and I'm going to say z is x plus y. Suppress the output here, and uh, yeah, that 
sounds pretty good. Oh, I actually should probably add a dot M as the file extension here. And then I will go ahead and make a, a couple of comments here. So adding a new example function to add two numbers. And I'll go ahead and say commit new file here. And as you can kind of see, I'm starting to populate this repository up in the cloud here on GitHub. Now, as you can imagine, this workflow is not very conducive here of using this web interface, right? I don't have access to an IDE. Um, and really what I would like to do is download or clone all of this code onto my local machine so that I can use things like um, integrated development environments or advanced text editors or other things that make it a little bit easier to do software development here. So to do that, like we saw earlier, one of the things we need to know here is we need to know the URL to this repository here. And that's actually very easy to get here. So in GitHub, if I just go ahead and navigate to my repository, so this is the one that I want to go ahead and uh, download or clone. If I come over here and click on this clone or download button, you'll see that it has a URL right here, HTTPS uh, github.com slash my name slash my matlab dot git. So that's the URL that I want. Let's go ahead and just make a note of this. I'll copy it to the clipboard and we're going to need that in a second and we'll come back and make sure that you remember what that URL is. Okay. So now that we've got that repository up on GitHub, we're ready to go ahead and download or clone that to our local machine. So to do that, we're going to want to use git in the command line or in the terminal to do that. Right now, what I want to do is let's just go ahead and start the shell. And what you're going to end up with here is, as you can expect, a uh, command line or a terminal style interface here for git. Now, since we want to download or clone those online repositories to our local machine, the first thing we probably need to do here is create a folder or a destination of where do we want to download all those files to. So I'm going to just go ahead and start Windows Explorer here. Maybe let me move it next to it so we have a little bit of a side by side going on. I'll go ahead and start my uh, or open my C drive and I'll just make a folder here. Let's just call this how about uh, local git repositories and let's just say I'd like to store all of my git repositories from online and download them to this folder so in order to do that I'll just come over here to the terminal here and I will go ahead and take a look and I can see here's the folder that I want so I will just change the directory to that right now in the terminal so as you can see it's an empty terminal or empty folder as you would expect what I want to do now is go ahead and ask Git to clone that repository from GitHub down to my local machine. So all I need to do is just type git clone and then paste in the URL that we had made a note of earlier. So if I hit enter here, you're going to see that basically it has downloaded that repository here. And now I have it on my local machine and I'm free to make edits using MATLAB or any other IDE that I choose. Now, the last step of this so-called setup or initial process here is uh, I might want to add this repository as well to the nice graphical user interface because right now I have the git terminal here and I can do all of my normal commands like git status. I could go ahead and, oh, I'm sorry, it's not actually not going to give me anything yet because I need to actually go into that directory that I just downloaded. So I'm going to change directory into my MATLAB, which is the repository that I just downloaded. And as you can see, now I'm inside this directory within the terminal here, and I can do things like git status, and it will tell me all this information about it. I can look at git log here so I can see who's been committing things to this repository. But for those of you who are just getting started, this terminal interface isn't the most user friendly thing. So that's actually what this second application, the GitHub desktop application does very nicely. So if I go ahead and start that, you're going to see that we end up with a nice graphical user interface. But the one thing I might need to do is actually add this newly cloned or newly downloaded repository to this GUI so I can see what's going on. So in order to do that, all I need to do is just come over here to this plus sign, click on the plus, and I'm going to click on add. And I will just browse to that local path here. Like we said, that's in my C drive. 
and I think we called it local git repositories and you see here's the my MATLAB repository that we just downloaded so I'll go ahead and hit OK here and click add repository and as you can now see it shows up on my list here on the left and I now have this nice graphical user interface which is basically equivalent to what we saw over here in the terminal right so again now I can see who's being who's committing to this and other changes and activity on this repository so with that, I think we're pretty much set up. So to summarize, what we've done at this point here is we looked at how to go ahead and create a new repository online or in the cloud. Those are again referred to as remote repositories. And then we investigated how to download or clone those repositories from the cloud down to my local machine. And finally, we looked at how to now add that repository to our graphical user interface or this github for uh, github desktop application so i think we're in a pretty good spot to start doing some actual work so in a future video we're going to take a look at the usual and basic operations in git as well as a nominal workflow that will help with software development in the future